All right, I'm going to show you some irrefutable scriptures that clearly debunk and refute modalism and oneness, this heretical modalist and oneness doctrine. There's many, 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 many scriptures I can go to in the New Testament, even in the Old Testament too, that prove there is separation and distinction in the Godhead. Now, this is not, like, this is not the Trinitarian belief that there are three separate persons and divine essence and all this other unbiblical stuff. No, the biblical Godhead is three in, is three in one. Okay, not three persons, and, and you know, they'll often run the first John 5, 7, where it says these three are one. And they'll say, see, look, three persons. Uh, no, it doesn't say three persons, it says these three are one. And I'm going to show you some verses that clearly refute modalism and oneness. Now, I've done some videos in the past refuting the Trinity, the Trinity doctrine, because the Trinity is polytheistic in nature. Because you have three separate gods, three separate, you know, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and they're, they're all, all God, but then they're one God. You know, it's polytheism, it's Catholic, that's what it is, it's pagan. But uh, the modalists are not correct either, because you have this thing of either it's trinity or, or modalist. Neither one of them is right, they're both wrong. And I'm going to show you some scriptures that clearly refute the uh, modalist doctrine and prove that there is distinction and separation in the Godhead. The three parts of the Godhead can separate with each other. And, it can also, and also I'm going to show you they can interact with each other too. Uh, because what modalism teaches is that that the Son of God, not God the Son, the proper term is Son of God, uh, God the Father, which God the Father is a biblical term, but not God the Son or God the Holy Ghost. The Son of God, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost, they can actually separate and they can interact with each other. There is distinction there. Because what modalism teaches is that there is no separation, there's no distinction. Uh, the Son of God, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost are just three modes of God, which is ridiculous. So first verse I'm going to go to is Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Here's a really, I mean, if you want to pin these modalists to the wall, here's a good one. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened up unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and, landing, and lighting upon him. Verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom, in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> so you see separation there. So Jesus, the Son of God, is on earth being baptized, the heavens open up, and then the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, comes down like a dove, and then the Father's up in heaven, basically praising the Son. There's separation, and they're interacting with each other. There is separation in the Godhead. That verse alone just destroys the modalist heresy of there's no separation, no distinction, there's just three modes. You know, it's ridiculous. And... Uh, that's just one of the many verses I can go to. I have some verses written down. Next one is 1 John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. Here's a re another really good one to uh, pin these modalists to the wall. 1 John chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus, not by water only, but by the water and blood. I, I, sorry, I'm not good at reading on a computer. And it, and it is this, the Spirit, that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Verse seven, verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. You go to verse 8. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree with one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness that God, which he hath, which he hath testified of his Son. Again, you see separation. And again, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Not three persons, like the Trinitarians claim, but they're three. These three are one. One God. And again, you see the, the God, which he have, you know, the witness, it says, for this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. God is testifying the witness of his Son. Again, proving separation, because God is testifying, obviously, it's the witness testifying of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. There is distinction. And another good one to go to is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 27 to 28. 1 Corinthians 15, 27 to 28. Here's a really good one that pinned these modalists to the wall. Um, for he hath put, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll start again. For he hath put all things under his feet, because when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is, that which he, sorry, not, again, not good at reading on a computer, uh, that he is accepted, which put all things under him. Verse 28, uh, when all things are subdued unto him, then shall the Son also subdue, uh, sorry, then also, that's, that's, yeah, oh, man, I'm having a hard time reading today. This is why I want to get a physical copy of the King James Bible, because I'm, I mean, anything, I mean, not just the Bible, whenever I read anything on the computer, so I'm not good at reading it. 
Uh, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, which put, away all, or sorry, which put all things under him, that God may be all in all. No, not wasn't good at reading that. It's again, not good at reading anything on a computer. But you see here, the Son is submitting to the Father. The son, the son of God is submissive to God the Father. So if there's no distinction, how is that possible? There's obviously separation and distinction in the Godhead. Very, very clearly. Uh, Acts, two, Acts chapter 2, verse 32 to 33. Another good, another good one. Acts 2. And, and there's so many verses I can go to. I mean, the Gospels are just packed with verses refuting modalism. Acts 2, 32 to 33. It says, This is Jesus, hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Verse 33 Therefore, being at the, by the right hand of God, exalted, having being received, or having received the Father of the promise of the Holy Ghost, He hath shed for this, which now ye see, which yet yeah, ye see now, or sorry, which ye now see and hear. Again, not good at reading on a computer, but again, God, the Son of God, is at the right hand of God the Father. You know, and it says, "This Jesus hath God raised up." God is raising up the Son of God, Jesus Christ. There is a distinction. If there's no separation and distinction in the Godhead, how is this possible? It's not. Um, for uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. And if you have a Bible, turn in those verses too. Don't just listen to me. Actually turn in your Bibles and, and you know, look at the verses with me, you know. Colossians 3, 1. If ye be risen with, or yeah, sorry, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are up above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Christ is, at, again, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is at the right hand of God. So how does that work if there's no distinction? There is separation. The two parts of the Godhead are separate. The Son of God is at the right hand of God. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. This, this modalist heresy, you had to deny plain scripture to, to uh, teach modalism. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. Colossians 2, 11 to 12. It says, In whom also ye are, cir are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, Bear with him in baptism. Also, ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. So God raised Jesus Christ, the Son of God, from the dead. So, again, you see, and this proves two things. This proves that Jesus, was the Son of God, was on earth, and the Father was in heaven, and the Father actually raised the Son of God from the dead. Again, proving separation and distinction in the Godhead. If modalism and oneness were correct, this would not be possible. Colossians 2, 11 to 12 would not work. Uh, Romans 10, 9. You know? I mean, just so many scriptures I can go to. The go Again, the Gospels, the, go the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are packed with verses that refute modalism. Romans 10, 9. If, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Again, we see God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He, the, God raised the Son of God from the dead. If modalism was correct, this wouldn't work. And again, this is not proving the Trinity, which there are three separate persons, all God, but then they're one God. You know, it's ridiculous. It, the Trinity is still false, too. See, modalism and Trinity are both equally false. The proper, and funny, because the word Trinity is not even in the King James Bible. The proper term is Godhead, not Trinity. Uh, Galatians 1.1 1, 1 says, let me go there. Paul, an apostle, not by men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. So again, God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. This doesn't work if, there's, if uh, modalism and oneness are correct. It, do, it doesn't work. There is separation and distinction in the Godhead. Uh, Matthew, and here's the last one I've written down. Matthew 10, verse 21 to 33. Or no, no 30, 31 to 33, sorry. Matthew, no, no, sorry, I mean... Sorry, I had it, had it written wrong in my notes. It's Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Actually, let me just go there real quick. I, I, think, I, I think I wrote the verse down wrong. Matthew 10 says, yes, yeah, 32 to 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. Verse 33, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So the Son of God is confessing people before God in heaven. How does that work if, 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 if modalism was correct? And again, uh, this, again, this is not dispensationally for us now because this is dispensationally in the Old Testament because when Jesus was walking on the earth, they were still doctrinally under the Old Testament, but it still proves separation in the Godhead because the Son of God is confessing people and denying people before the Father, before God. 
So if modalism was correct, none of these verses would work. None of them. I mean, all proof, separation, and distinction. You know, how the Son submits to the Father, how God, you know, Son of God is at the right hand of God the Father. It, it, it just so many verses. That, I mean, again, the Gospels are packed, packed with verses that prove the biblical Godhead. So if modalism was correct, these verses I showed you would not work. They, would, they, they wouldn't work. Because there is separation and distinction in the Godhead. So, anyway, don't be deceived by modalism. God bless you. Goodbye.